So in addition to looking at single scalar values, we can also look at distributions of values with MX board. And the way that this is visualized with TensorBoard is through the histogram. So let's create an example. Here we're going to create a scenario where we have distributions of values that change over time. And the distributions that we're going to create are from a normal distribution. And what we want is that every iteration, we want the distribution to get narrower and narrower. And the way we do that is by changing the standard deviation of the distribution we're sampling from. So here, we're opening a summary writer, as usual, using the same log directory. Now, with the context, we have access to the SW variable. And we're going to loop through 10 times. And every iteration, we're going to sample 100 values. 100 values shaped by 25 by 4. This is pretty arbitrary pick, but it will show later on how we flatten these values down to just 100. And that's handled by MX board automatically. Uh, and so the distribution that we're using to sample at each iteration will be centered around zero. And the standard deviation or scale is going to get reduced every iteration. So we start with 10, and then we get that halved to five, and it gets down to a third of 10 as well. So it keeps going and gets narrower and narrower. And now we have our sampled values from a normal distribution. We can go ahead and call the add histogram method of the summary writer. So pretty similar to what we saw with this scalar, add scalar, we give it a tag. And this is just so we can see in the visualizations what, where the data has come from. And we provide the data through the values argument once more. But this time, this is an ND array of values of shape 25 by 4 in this case. But this is where the flattening takes place. So it gets flattened down to 100 values. And the, the distribution and histogram will be plotted across those values. Next argument we've got is bins. So this specifies how many bins or buckets we want our data to be aggregated up to. So if we specify 200, it's going to look at data, find the minimum value and the maximum value, and break that range down into 200 equally spaced bins. And then for each bin, it will calculate how many data points fell into that bin. And this is what's going to be used for the histogram visualization. And next, as with all summary writer functions, we define the global step. So here we're just going to give that as i, which is our iteration. So if we run that, in TensorBoard, we can now see two extra tabs have appeared. We've got the distributions tab and the histograms tab. They show pretty similar data, um, but we'll look at the histograms tab first. Now we can see the samples that we generated. Uh, we've got a 3D chart um, by default, which shows in the distance we've got the first iteration, and then as you get closer to the screen, closer to the foreground, you've got the newest iterations. So as you hover over, you can actually see the counts and the values in each of the bins. Um, to begin with, we've got a wide standard deviation, so the distribution is quite spread out. And now as we move closer and closer, to the foreground, we see the more recent steps and the distribution narrows. We can change the visualization display. Um, it's got two different modes. By default, it's set to offset, which is why we see that 3D effect. But we can also overlay the distributions too. And again, hover over will give you access to the data and the step that's used for that particular plot, which can be useful. Now on the distributions tab, we've got very similar data. Uh, this time it's plotted in a way that along the x-axis we have the global step and on the y-axis we have the value. So this is similar to what we would have seen with scalar. But this time we have the percentile bands color graded. So we can see where the line, where the, the color is the darkest, that's where we are in the center of the distribution. And as it gets lighter, it's at the tails of the distribution. And then we can see how that changes over time. So it's the same data, just represented in a slightly different way. 